Hello, my name is Anthony Zader, and I am the principal trumpeter of the Arapaho Philharmonic. So in the Chicago area, there are two things that must happen as a young kid. One is playing baseball, and the second is playing a brass instrument. So I didn't really have much of a choice. Um, my uncle had an old coronet, and it was given to me when I was eight years old, and I was told that that was the instrument I was going to play. And I have ever since. Originally, the trumpet did not look anything like this. In fact, it probably wasn't made of any kind of brass at all. Um, you could have made a trumpet out of bone. You could have made a trumpet out of wood. Um, whatever was laying around, as long as you had a way to buzz into this receptacle, and as long as it was long enough, it would make a sound, right? So that's really what the original trumpet was used for, was to signal something was about to happen. As music evolved and became less uh, about perfect fourths and perfect fifths, you know, we're introducing some chromaticism now, the instruments had to evolve along with it. And so in order to facilitate that on the trumpet, what we had to do was add valves. And so if I just play with nothing, just we call it open, Now I'm pressing down the first valve, which then sends the air through this first slide right here. So listen to the difference now. Right? And so on and so forth. I have seven different positions or valve combinations on this trumpet. Open, two, one, one and two, two and three, one and three, and one, two and three. Now I'm able to hit all of the notes in between, and we call that chromaticism. Within the brass family, the trumpet is known as the soprano instrument of that family, meaning we are playing the higher notes, right? The tuba is playing the low notes. But within the trumpet family itself, we have a whole host of different kinds of trumpets that produce different sounds and different timbres and different registers. So this is your common C trumpet that you see me play with the Arapaho Philharmonic every single concert, right? This is what this uh, trumpet was designed for. It's designed to project over a large body of people. But not all trumpets are made equally. And you wouldn't want to use this trumpet if you were, say, playing at a jazz club, where you might see something like this, which is called the flugelhorn. Its design is exactly the same as the trumpet. It's the same valve combinations, but as you can see, the bell is quite larger and the shape is a little bit different, which gives it a more mellow sound. Now, the opposite of that is this little guy right here, which is called the piccolo trumpet. This is what's called a mute. And when you're growing up playing the trumpet, you use mutes because mom and dad don't want to hear you practice so much. But then as you, you, know, as you grow, as you evolve, as you get better, mutes actually are a way to change the color of the sound. Right? So I'm going to play one note here. I'm just going to sustain it, and I'm going to throw this mute in. Music, it's, it's way more than just playing notes on a page. It's communication. It's a way to communicate with your fellow musicians. It's a way to communicate with your audience members. It's also a way to communicate, I know this is gonna sound kind of weird, but it's a way to communicate with yourself. And what I mean by that is this takes you somewhere. This, this takes you to a place where none of the craziness that's happening in the world exists because it's just you and the instrument and the music. And it's pure, it's, it's desirable, it's lovable.
right? It's also hateable. There are times I want to throw this thing out the window, right? But that's, that's the kind of relationship that you end up developing with the musical instrument and music in general. And once you get sucked into that and do it for long enough, there's nothing else in the world that gives you that kind of satisfaction.